Good morning, everyone. Thank you um, so much for having me um, today. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I know that I share some similarities uh, with all of you here this morning. So what I thought I would do is uh, spend the next 15 or 20 minutes uh, telling you some short stories about me and my journey with the hope that you'll be able to take away some nuggets or some learnings for you and your journey. Sound like a plan? Okay. Do I have a clicker? Thank you. So as you heard, um, I am part of uh, Marriott International. And a little story um, about this company. So this company started in 1927 when the two co-founders, uh, Willard Marriott and his wife, Alice Marriott, started a tiny root beer stand in 1927 at the height of the Depression. Pretty courageous. So, 30 years later, in 1957, they opened their first hotel and discovered a business that would be their legacy to the world. Today, Merit International has 4,000 hotels, right? 18 brands. Many of them are represented, or all of them are represented here on the chart behind me. Everything from the luxury segment uh, with the Ritz Carlton brand very iconic, bulgari, to lifestyle, which is renaissance, autograph, um, et cetera, to the select service brands like Courtyard by Marriott, Residence Inn by Marriott. In the, in the last few years, the company has been very active uh, in actually acquiring new brands and creating new brands as well. Some that you may or may not have heard of, like Edition, which is our partnership with Ian Schrager, or AC Hotels by Marriott. And then most recently, in March of this year, we acquired a brand in Africa um, called Protea. And this is a brand with 116 hotels and overnight uh, gave Marriott International a huge presence in the region. So overnight we went from being the seventh largest operator to being the largest operator in that region. And what's important about this is we then had the infrastructure, and most importantly, the talent, the local talent uh, that, we, that would help us, that would give us a leg up in terms of development for all of our brands um, in the region. So very, very excited about that. So you may be wondering, so what is this Indian woman doing um, at Merit International? So in preparation for uh, today's conversation, I started thinking about, or started uh, trying to remember when the first time was in my life, uh, growing up, that I felt um, a little different. So I was born and brought up in Mumbai, lived there for 18 years. Uh, with my parents and two siblings. So growing up uh, in Mumbai in the early 70s was a little bit different than it is today. So no multinational companies, right? Uh, one channel on the TV, true story. Uh, not much global influence, if you will, okay? No McDonald's. So pretty conservative. So I was probably, I don't know, five or six years old uh, when I um, realized that I was mixed. My dad's family, was, or my dad, uh, is Hindu. And my mother's family came from Persia or Iran. Not a big deal today. But back in those days, it was different. Now, universal truth, and you guys know this, 
is that we all just want to belong. We want to, especially as kids, right? As kids, all we want to do is fit in. So my parents brought us up, knowing this, obviously, and, and, and all the heartache that this can cause, uh, my parents really stressed the fact that different doesn't have to be bad. Different can actually be better. And what you have to do is find the positives, and then you have to really lean into it, own it. Make it something really good. Make it something better. So the other thing that was kind of unusual for me growing up was um, when I was nine years old, um, my mom went into business for herself. Not a big deal today, but I was the only kid whose mom worked at the time. I have to tell you, my mom is probably my uh, best role model. She was terrific. She is terrific. Um, she taught us um, to do what you love. She always talked about the fact that if you did what you love, then it wouldn't feel like work, right? She taught us to take risks. Importantly, she taught us to go out and get what you want. No one's going to give it to you. Go out and get what you want. And she taught us to reach for the stars. So I had a pretty normal childhood, um, you know, 18 years. And like any teenager, I had uh, really no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, I was lucky enough um, to have had the opportunity to come to the US uh, to get my master's degree. Now, my mom's business was um, she ran beauty salons inside hotels. So I was in and out of hotels kind of all my life. Um, we went down the path, Nusrat, of the, the medical school and all that, and that wasn't going to happen. But, you know, Indians, right? So you got to do that. Um, but I, I, I decided that, you know, hotels looked like fun. People always looked like they were having a good time. This is surely something that I would love to do. Um, so uh, came, came here to the US to, uh, to get my master's degree in hotel and restaurant management. Um, graduated, um, got a job at uh, ITT Sheraton, which is now part of Starwood. And uh, a year later, or a couple years later, um, I was taking a flight uh, on business from Dallas to Houston. I know you guys are all like, what is she talking about? Why is she talking about this flight? Um, Dallas to Houston on Southwest Airlines, which is the love airline. So I happened to be, the flight was full. I had to get a middle seat. And I happened to sit next to a really cute guy. So fast forward a couple years later, we fell in love, we got married, <laughs> still married 20 years later. Um, I spent eight, the first, the, after school, I spent 18 years um, with Starwood. And then five years ago, um, a woman called me and she said she was the vice president of talent acquisition at Marriott International. And would I be interested in talking to them? And you know, timing was right. Um, I have a little girl, she's 12. At the time, she was seven. You know, if I was ever going to move, this was the time, et cetera, et cetera. The challenge uh, seemed really interesting, right? They wanted me to, to do work on, on uh, repositioning a brand. So we decided to do it, and we moved from New York um, to Bethesda. So when I heard of Marriott International, um, I knew that the company was um, very trustworthy, very consistent, very predictable, really a great company to work for. 
What I didn't know at the time was that Marriott was really quite an innovative company. You know, I didn't know that they were the first to introduce revenue management, for example, in the hospitality industry. I didn't know that they were the first to have um, uh, a loyalty program. Merit Rewards today is the number one loyalty program with 45 million members. I didn't know that they were the first to introduce line extensions for their brands. And so we have Courtyard by Marriott and Residence Inn by Marriott and Fairfield by Marriott. And that really, the brand extensions allowed the company to grow to the 4,000 hotels um, that we have today. So pretty fascinating. I was really, really excited um, about the work ahead. So the, my official charge, if you will, was to differentiate the Renaissance brand. And re the Renaissance brand was very uh, close in uh, look and feel and, and delivery of the service as, it, as the Marriott brand. And, but didn't really have its own sort of independence or point of view. So digging into uh, you know, the work ahead, we realized quickly that the opportunity was not just to differentiate the brand, but it was really to reposition the brand into new space, to reposition the Renaissance brand into the lifestyle space. So you may be asking, what is the lifestyle space and what does that actually mean? So lifestyle brands are experiential, right? They go beyond the functional and they connect with consumers emotionally. And so what, what we wanted is for people to actually choose the brand because of how the brand made them feel. Not just because, hey, I want a good bed and a hot shower, which frankly are table stakes. But choose the brand because of how it makes you feel. And so that was the mission and that was the, the journey um, that we set out on. So why, why do this? Why go into the lifestyle space? What was the business reason for it? Well, the business reason is that the consumer was changing, right? And so when you think about, and, and you all here in your business, about the next generation, right? Generation Y are the millennials. Lifestyle brands are increasingly important to this generation. And it's important because in just a few years, the majority of the traveling public will belong to Gen X and Gen Y. And so it was really, really important that we at Merit International have brands that appeal to this generation. Experiential brands um, or, or Gen X and Gen Y definitely have a pr propensity to buy experiences much more than baby boomers. Okay? So we decided that this is what we were going to do, and it was certainly an uphill battle. Right? So once we sort of um, declared, if you will, that this was the path forward, um, just assimilating into the corporate environment uh, was pretty treacherous. I was an outsider. I was different. Different thought process. Different approach into what was a pretty um, a traditional sort of corporate culture, right? Um, and I, I won't kid you, it was, uh, it was pretty scary. Um, I didn't fit in. There was no way I was going to fit in. And frankly, guys, I, I don't know that I actually wanted to fit in, right? Um, I decided that I was going to actually lean in to what was different and use it to actually uh, further the objective. It, in hindsight today, it had to take an outsider to push this kind of change. The company needed somebody with a very, with very diverse thought process 
to actually come in and say, hey, we're not going to do this. We're actually going to do that, right? So countless conversations um, on both a strategic as well, as well as tactical level, right, about what the approach was once we decided what the long range plan was. How are we going to actually do this? Down to conversations about what is the return on investment for ambiance. Tough having conversations with the financial guys and convincing them, guys, the margin is in the mood. They got it eventually. So one of the things re really important was uh, you know, to establish some metrics so that on an ongoing basis, we would know whether we were winning and how we were winning. And so we did establish these metrics up front and said that, hey, things that we are comfortable with, things that, we are, uh, that are tangible from a metrics perspective, like revenue per available room, we had to see growth there. Owner satisfaction, because we are a franchise business, it's really important that the owners are satisfied, right? We also track our brand health through metrics like brand I love, and we wanted to see um, improvement there. So once we, once we sort of had these uh, metrics, metrics established, it was really about monitoring the metrics and making sure that the work that we were doing was actually impacting the metrics in a positive way. Now, the brand was acquired in 1997 by Merit International. And frankly, it did not really have a point of view. It didn't, uh, we didn't understand sort of at its core, right, what the essence of the brand was, what the brand wanted to be. So the first order of business was really to define that, to really be able to articulate to the entire community importantly internal before we did it externally about what this was. There, were three, there are three major areas of focus. Uh, the first one is culture and operations. And for this, um, from, a, from a cultural standpoint, it was important that we are in the business of, we are in the service business. So the people who deliver our, our service are actually the face of our brand. So really important to win hearts and minds of all of the, uh, we call them ambassadors um, at the hotel, and really instill sort of a sense of pride in them. And so a ton of work um, around that aspect. Uh, from an operation standpoint, the brand is about discovery, and it was important that we operationalized the marketing message so that when a guest arrived at a hotel, that the hotel was actually prepared to deliver on this notion of discovery. And we do that through a program called Navigator. I'm going to show you uh, a video in a second. The second area of focus was marketing and public relations. And this was really about taking a completely new look um, at uh, our approach towards earned media really leaning in on PR and really leaning in on social media. And the final area of focus was style and design. And this really has to do with the physicality of the hotel. This has to do with the product. And really a departure from what was, what was traditional for the Renaissance brand um, to a much more modern aesthetic. It was really important that the, that the, um, that the design of the hotels were a physical manifestation of the brand, if you will. That it actually brought out this whole notion of discovery. And I'm going to show you in the video some before and after pictures. So it's been about a five-year journey. Um, and we are certainly nowhere at the end. Uh, but we are definitely well on our way. And uh, the reason that we're well on our way is really the support of all of the teams that were involved uh, in the work thus far and all of the stakeholders. One of the most important stakeholders was the hotel general managers. This is a brand that has 156 hotels today worldwide. So 
the brand team actually did a video, and this is an internal video. It's never meant for external uh, consumption, but I thought it was fitting in light of today's conversation. Uh, but we did this video to say thank you to the general managers for all of their support and for bringing the brand from where it was to where we are today. 